Our names are Mike and Heather. We recently bought a Ford Transit Connect to convert into a camper van. Mouse! Although our van is not finished, we headed out on a Route 1 road trip, which is the longest north to south road in the United States. We have already been through Maine, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New York, as well as New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, where we camped last night. Get in, loser. We're going to DC. Oh my god. I knew you were gonna do that. Wrapping up stuff at the campsite we stayed in last night. We are on our way down Route 1 on our first van life road trip. Today we're going to be heading into Washington DC. We're just getting everything in the van ready to, to roll out and we'll be heading into the city. Both Heather and I have been there before, but it's always a nice opportunity to get into DC and see some of the monuments. Once we finish that, we'll continue on. We're hoping to get through Virginia tonight. So let's go. We're on Pennsylvania Avenue. All right, where should we park? Super cool, just went to pay for parking and it's free today. So we just parked and now we're headed over to the Washington Monument, which we actually saw driving in. So we're really close. I don't think it was intentional, but look at the paw prints and the footprints of whoever walked through the wall. This was still wet. It's cute. That's cool. So I don't know what time all of the Smithsonian museums open, but... Or are they even open if it's a Sunday? Why yeah, is the no, parking free? Oh, okay. Right now in the National Mall, this is where you'll find all of the Smithsonian Institutes, the Smithsonian Museums. They line either side, and the Washington Monument is at this end, and the Capitol Building is at the other. I was just telling Mike that all across the world, there's different like poses that you can do, so like the Eiffel Tower, you hold it in your hand, right? Or the Ling Tower Pisa, everybody's out there going like this. Where the only real one that I found for this is people lying down and having it coming out of their lower section. So use your imagination of what that looks like. But yeah, there's no good cheesy tourist pose yeah, for... Like oh yeah, I guess you could touch top. like the tip. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> it's an obelisk. So, yeah. Just casually walking with the Capitol building in the background. I'm pretending like I'm filming this monument, but it's really to get that cute dog across the street. Look at his ears. We're getting closer to it. I like being in this area because it's all connected. So you've got the Lincoln Memorial or Lincoln Monument, the Tidal Basin over there that has some stuff, the Washington Monument, Capitol Building, the Mall, the White House is right here. Everything's easy to walk to. It's very high. And then... And everybody running and jogging. It's making us feel terrible about our lives not exercising more. Over there. Lincoln Memorial. In the reflection pool. Yes. Heather and I are fans of The Amazing Race. In one of the, I don't know if it was a season finale, it must have been because it was in the States. They were in Washington, D.C. and they were over at the Tidal Basin and the challenge was you had to exchange code words with like a secret agent to, to get the briefcase with the clue to the next challenge. So basically, there's a bunch of people from the show running around trying to find the briefcase over there. Wow, you can definitely see the reflection a lot better right here. Too cool. I was all excited because we got to take a shower to hit the campground. <laughs> And we're already drenched in sweat. It's humid and hot. Yes. Look at this mop, the frizz. But the view's worth it. So we're gonna walk to the back. I don't see anyone else doing this, so it's probably not going to be that worth it, but we'll see. Uh, 
We walked by a security guard. We weren't even sure if we were allowed to be back here because there's no one else over on this side. And yeah, it's kind of cool. This is what the view is. You get a cool view and there's no tourists back here. I'm just looking at the columns on this. This is so cool. Empty. No one else. Everyone just walks up the steps, walks in, and then heads out. But if you want to get away from the tourists or some cool photos, the back of the monument's a good place for it. Yeah, so if you want those epic column photos, there it's at. So I think we're going to head over to the Tidal Basin now. There's the Martin Luther King Monument. I can never remember which ones are monuments and which ones are memorial. Like, I think this is actually a memorial. That's a monument. And then I know the Jefferson Monument or Memorial is over on the Tidal Basin, too. I want this last time to be the last time. So we're coming up to the Martin Luther King Memorial and I don't think I saw, stopped at this one the last time. I was only here the last time very briefly as well, so this will be exciting and new thing to check off the bucket list in Washington, D.C. The quote on the side is kind of like symbolic seeming because it looks almost like a monument of Martin Luther King Jr. was pulled out of the, the stones over there. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a cool effect. It looks like it just slid right over there. So let's go. Only somewhere we Mic drop. We're making our way to the White House, but we have to walk past this again. So, pretty epic. And lots more people exercising. This will be cool. I haven't seen the White House from this side. I've only ever gone and seen it from the ellipse on the back. Catching our first glimpses of the White House through the bars over there. I'm happy to see that they didn't close off Pennsylvania Avenue. I didn't know with the insurrection a couple months ago how the security would be because I know that it was closed off for a while. So I think we're very fortunate to be able to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue and get a view from the front. Never mind, they just said that the sidewalks was now closed and we have to all move to the park. So Which I wonder what's awesome. happening. I don't know. I don't know if something's happening or it's just like a certain times of the day so that you're not allowed on the sidewalk. But yeah, I guess you can't go in front of it now. I know, we are right so as, close. Right as we get there, they, they close. But you can still see from over here. Yeah, you still got a killer view, but you just can't go up to those gates anymore. We're being nosy and hanging out for a second to see what's happening. So we gave up on waiting for something exciting to happen because it was like in the beating sun. But we gave it about a good half hour. Yeah, so I got to see it from that side. Even though it wasn't like right up against the fence, it's still pretty cool. And we got to walk on Pennsylvania Avenue and get our selfies, which what else was there to do at the White House? So yeah. very successful still. Yeah, and we were over the, on the sidewalk, like, but yeah. yeah. But Mike has never seen it from that side, so that's why we had to come all the way up here, even though the back view might even be a little bit more impressive. But now we're gonna head back to Appa and get on cruising down Route 1. Making our way back past the National Mall. You can see over here. There's the Capitol building. On this side, we've got the Washington Monument. We're heading back to Appa. It's hot, for sure. So we've got about, not too far away. I mean, not any, everything around here is probably like half hour, 45 minute walk, which is like, not nothing, but it's not terrible. We're about 15 minutes from the van. We're heading this way. Still? <laughs> we'll be there soon. We gave in. I couldn't make it back to the van without a drink. So we got water and. <laughs> Slushy. I just look too good and it's so hot. <laughs> we just handed the dude the card. I have no idea how much. It's like $50. It would honestly be worth it at this point. So, we're, we're almost back. We're, we're about five minutes. We only shade in all of Washington, D.C. And all bus parked in it. <laughs> so it took this entire way to get it. We made it back. We'll probably take a second to kind of regroup and then we're gonna hit the road. Take a baby wipes bath real quick. <laughs> home sweet home. Right, we're back in the van. Wiped down with some baby wipes and now we're off to Virginia.
commenting on how easy it is to actually drive around Washington DC, probably one of the easiest cities that we have driven through on this Route 1 trip. And my theory is that everybody's on their best behavior because of all the extra security. Nobody wants to get a ticket on, on their vacation. Oh, and welcome to Virginia. Oh, we're in Virginia. And as soon as we get across into Virginia, that Route 1 sign again. Let's run away. relatively painless of trying to find ruin again. <laughs> Alright, so we just parked. I did a quick outfit change because it is very hot, so I just switched to a tank top. And now we're on our way to check out George Washington's house. I don't know that we'll go in, but we'll go check it out, walk the grounds. There's some nice views of the Potomac down there. We'll do a kind of quick in and out. <laughs> Hopefully it's not that bad. <laughs> Have a walk. So this is the house and the view from behind. So this is probably where we want to want to get to. Okay. Looks like there's a lot of trees so hopefully there's some shade. Yeah so we'll go in front of the unit and over. So. All right. I think that this is the closest we're gonna get to that because of this. I don't feel too bad because there's another person who's parked right next to us who isn't going in also because it's $30 a person but I don't know. <laughs> that was just a lot of money. I think for us, it, I don't think it was really worth it, which is kind of disappointing. Yeah, like I l would have liked to see it, but $60, and maybe it's $60 would be us. okay if it's like you spent the whole day there and you got $60 worth, but for Mike and I, it was just meant to be a quick like, oh hey, isn't that something cool? Maybe go check out the museum for an hour or two, but that's just a bit of a hefty price for something that all he did was live there. Coming from like Washington and Philadelphia, where we got to go into a tour for free to like Constitution Hall in Philadelphia, and you could have access to all of those museum malls for free. It's just to then come to something like this and it'd be $60. It's kind of like, yeah, we'll pass. <laughs> Definitely us on a soapbox. We'll see if there's any other kind of neat roadside attraction. Well, there and... is. There's Gum Springs isn't too far away from here, which is actually one of the stops that we want to go to next. So I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in Gum Springs at all, but just my quick little research up on Route 1 to try to figure out cool places to stop. It was actually the settlement of um, the people that, I don't want to say George Washington freed because he enslaved them, but the people that were enslaved by George Washington when he finally let them free at the end of his life, they started their own community in Gum Springs and it was one of the first in the United States for that to happen. So let me do a quick search so that way I can talk a little bit more educated because again, I'm not pretending that I am by any means. A five minute drive from Mount Vernon is Gum Springs Historical Center. So I would much rather spend my money at that museum. So according to the Gum Springs Historical Society and Museum website, Gum Springs is the oldest African-American community in Fairfax County. West Ford, a former slave, founded the community after being freed by George Washington. It was a sanctuary for freedmen and runaways. The museum celebrates the triumph of the historic black community. So it's just a really cool stop to see and it's right off of Route 1 as well. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it says today Gum Springs has more than 2,500 residents, but up to 500 descendants from the original families. And I think a lot of times when people think Washington, they do think, oh, he's the founder of our country, which he is, but he wasn't a perfect person by any means, especially when it comes to all the people that he enslaved. Oh, it looks to be closed. Oh, it's kind of a bummer. Oh, there's the, there's the museum. Is it closed? Uh, it looks, to, looks be. to be. So it's part of Virginia history trials. Well, unfortunately, I think we caught on a day it's not opened. Uh, we are coming through Virginia on a Sunday, so that probably has something to do with it, but it's not too far off Route 1. With the timeline that we have, um, we've kind of had to prioritize some of the larger things that we wanted to, to check out, and we haven't had the opportunity to stop in as many of the small towns or to look at the, the local historical societies the way that we would want to. 
but I think stopping in and seeing some of the, the local history and uh, learning about the culture of an area is really a cool part of traveling down across the country because we're seeing so many different types of places from the very top of Maine with the, the French influence into Virginia with the, the local population that started from a former enslaved person. There's such diversity across the country and, and being able to experience and learn about all of it is really important. If I'm being honest, I'd never really heard of this place before setting the itinerary for Route 1, which is why I think it's just so important to stop in at these type of places and fill in some of the blanks that the history books left out. So it turns out we're gonna see George Washington's house after all, just not the one in Mount Vernon. Right now we're currently driving through Fredericksburg, Virginia, where his boyhood home was. So still getting an opportunity to see George Washington's house. Potentially, we'll see. We'll see what the entrance fee is when we get there. Yes. <laughs> but maybe we'll treat it like Einstein's house and just look at it from the outside. They wouldn't even let you do that at Mount Vernon though, because that's what we had wanted to do. You had to actually buy the ticket to get to even just look at it. To the property to even see it. So hopefully, worst case scenario, we can just drive by it. <laughs> Turns out we're here a little bit before closing and we can just walk up for free. They said that they weren't charging, but they also said that we can just drive up to that next parking lot and be able to see it a good shot as well anyways. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. Hop back in Appa and go check out the parking lot because it's a little bit quicker of a, of a viewing point. So that is George Washington's childhood home. Even though we're minutes away from closing, we can still see it, which is more than what we were able to do at Mount Vernon. So I would call this a success. Okay, so we're back on the road, heading south along Route 1. Are we back on Route 1 yet? No, nope, almost. Almost back on Route 1. We just had a quick detour at George Washington's boyhood home. So I'm very happy that just by, uh, I guess, happenstance, we saw those signs and we're like, oh hey, we totally can still check out at least one home that he lived in. So it was really cool to even just see it from the outside. So now we're back on, almost back on Route 1, where we can finish the last leg of our journey, which is heading to North Carolina last leg of our journey today. We are by no means done with this uh, trip down to the Florida Keys. <laughs> I, 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 